So let's talk about the Shock Elite of the Deathwing, with a review of the Deathwing Knights, just how good are they in Warhammer 40k, and some of the tankiest Terminators in the entire game. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, where today we're talking Dark Angels once more, and in this video I thought we'd take a look over the data sheets and the rules for the Deathwing Knights, looking over their data sheets and stats, talking through some more obvious combos with the units, and maybe having a bit of a think as to what sort of points cost would have them get good. I also thought it would be interesting to have a bit of a comparison between their maces and their different sergeant weapons, to see which ones do better against the majority of targets. The Deathwing Knights in Warhammer 40k are essentially the champions of the Inner Circle, an elite force within the already ridiculously elite Deathwing Terminator formations of the Dark Angels, their first company that aims to deliver the hammer blow to Xenos Heretic and particularly traitor Dark Angels, the Dark Angels rather famously having enough resources to deploy their entire first company in Terminator armour in times of need. Upon ascension to the Deathwing, the Dark Angels are granted more secrets of their chapter's checkered history in the past, including their secret purpose to hunt down and exterminate the Fallen Brothers, or at least ones that the newly returned Lion cannot redeem to the chapter. In battle, they fight under the command of a Knight Master with Storm Shields and either Maces of Absolution or Caliber Knight Greatswords. Their miniatures first came out in the Deathwing Assault box set, and at time of recording, we are still waiting for an individual release for these Deathwing Knights, though I'd expect that they'll probably be priced at the same sort of amount as the standard Terminator squad. £40 or $65 for a unit of five of them. In general, I think the miniatures were really quite well received. Kind of fun to get a slightly different and more Dark Angels themed take on Terminator armour. That certainly feels like there's some elements of their heresy era designs built into these Deathwing Knights. Plus plenty of unique chapter iconography, some robed bodies with the option for hooded heads, and some nice Deathwing style symbols on their shields. Overall, I quite like the miniatures. Perhaps the biggest downside of the kit, though, was losing the Deathwing Command Squad as a playable datasheet, as it's no longer buildable from the same set, and you use the standard Terminator kits to build your core Deathwing now. In the future, when these are released, if you were looking to pick them up at a discount, there's plenty of places that will stock them around the world. Check out the links in the video description below for the channel's affiliate partners. Anything brought through them can give you a saving versus games workshop, and also helps to keep these videos coming. Jumping into their rules proper though, and let's talk about the Deathwing Knights datasheet from the upcoming Dark Angels Codex, where admittedly plenty of people were none too happy as to the rules changes, though I would guess that as a result, they won't cost quite as many points in game as before, but I'd still rate them as being worth it more than an average Terminator on a model per model basis. Overall, the Deathwing Knights are a fairly chunky Terminator unit with a massive focus on their defensive stats. The one change that they made in the Codex was locking the squad at 5 of them. Previously you could make a rather enormous and very intimidating squad of 10. Now you're just going to be limited to 5, which does slightly reduce the big synergies that you can get with things like stratagems or characters. Still though, I wouldn't see that as the end of the world. That's still going to be a unit that's in excess of 200 points most likely. And that's still easily efficient enough to be targeting with stratagems and enhancements. Otherwise, they're an infantry squad on the board with movement 5, deep strike and objective control 1 all the things that you expect out of a normal Terminator unit. As mentioned, I think that the real standout draw to the Deathwing Terminators is their durability. With their Storm Shields, they get a 4 wound profile, with a Toughness 5 2 plus save and 4 plus invulnerable save that all Terminators get. But on top of that, they get their Inner Circle special rule, which was the bane of 9th edition for enemies of the Deathwing, but is still absolutely mighty now, as it inflicts a minus 1 damage on enemy attacks. So say if you had a damage 3 weapon try and attack them, it will become damage 2, or damage 2 will become damage 1. Between the extra wound and that damage debuff, it just means that they're fantastically more durable than standard terminators out there. The extra wound will be great against anything that's damage 1, and say for example if you're shooting them with damage 3 weapons, it'd take 2 shots to take out a terminator, compared with say the standard terminator squads where it's going to just take 1. For damage 2 weapons, it's going to take 4 failed saves to take out a Deathwing Knight, compared with the 2 it would take for normal Terminators, again basically double durability there, and he needs a mighty damage 5 hits to kill a Terminator outright, so there is a pretty reasonable chance that the model still lives, even if they get hit by something like a LAS cannon. Then, as if that weren't enough tankiness for the units, they also have some resilience against mortal wounds, which I think would otherwise be the best way to kill them, given that they've got high saves and high invulnerables. The Watcher in the Dark that accompanies them gets to trigger its ability when they first take damage from mortal wounds if it wants to, and for the rest of that phase you get a 4 plus feel no pain type save against those, which is pretty excellent for any armies that wanted to circumvent your armour. 
Between all that, it means that these guys are tough. You should be able to entrust an objective they've just taken to their defensive profiles. And the squad isn't going to go down to small arms. It's going to need some dedicated good AP firepower with multiple damage, ideally, to take them out. Moving on to their melee damage. The primary squad gets to choose between either a Mace of Absolution or a Power Weapon. The Mace of Absolution was nerfed a bit compared with the Index. Four attacks at Strength 6, AP 1 and Damage 2, but still a fairly nice general purpose profile. The Power Weapon gets you five attacks hitting on a 2+, plus, a Strength 6, AP 1 and Damage 1. I feel like perhaps the way that the Maces were reduced has annoyed people as they used to be absolutely brutal in ages past, often hitting with Strength 8 and Damage 3, which was fairly mad. Both of these profiles are just a lot better suited to take you out enemy light or medium infantry and just won't punch up against vehicles so well. They do at least have the Nightmaster to back them up, who is rather good. I thought it would be interesting to see the damage output of the four knights beyond the Nightmaster that are armed with either the maces or swords, and these are the rough sort of numbers that you can expect out of them recorded in wounds dealt. As you can see, the profiles really are quite well balanced here. The swords do better against hordes, the maces do better against intercessors, though only slightly. The swords do better against terminators, the maces slightly better against rhinos, and it's fairly even against a very big hard target like a land raider where you're wounding on sixes. Out of the two, I think I prefer the swords by a little bit here, where the maces win, it's not really by much. I think I'd rather go with the ones with the extra AP personally. They maybe do need to choose their targets a little bit compared with some other Terminator units out there, but even just the base squad, never mind the scary Nightmaster, is still rather good. Fairly comfortably killing around about four standard Space Marines or two Terminators, and being particularly good at ripping apart hordes even compared with other Terminator units out there. I feel like the actual base loadout of the squad is very much half of the story though, as otherwise you get the big weapon on the Nightmaster. You either get to choose a great weapon of the Unforgiven, which has been renamed since the flail profile that you can see here, though the damage output is exactly the same. I still like to think of it as a flail myself. That one gets you 5 attacks, hitting on a 2 at strength 6, AP 2, damage 2, with both sustained hits and devastating wounds, really quite potent against most stuff. And the other one is a new relic weapon profile, that one gets you lethal hits, and 6 attacks at strength 7, AP 2, and damage 2. The Nightmaster does a seriously significant amount of heavy lifting for his unit, and it's kind of nice that you get his damage output until the squad is completely wiped. It does mean that you've got four less valuable Terminators for the enemy to chew through before they get to him. Both of the weapons are really quite general purpose. They're both really quite even against hordes or standard issue Space Marines. The Flail wins out a little bit against the Terminators with its devastating wounds, but anything that's greater than Toughness 7 will be slightly worn out by the Relic weapon, though the difference isn't enormous. I probably wouldn't worry too hard about which one of these you choose. Again, they do seem pretty well balanced and kind of the same sort of effectiveness against most targets, but just nice to see that the Nightmaster hits extra, extra hard. Overall, putting those two numbers together, say if we went with the standard Deathwing Knights with swords and the Nightmaster with the Relic weapon with the lethal hits, these are the sort of numbers that you get. Though, as from the previous charts, they don't really change all that much if you swap the weapons around, really. A unit of 5 of them will just absolutely butcher any hordes. 5 of them kill an average of 18 termagants, which is pretty impressive. For standard issue space marines, again, they'll go through them very quickly indeed. Around about 6 or 7 standard 2 wound space marines killed in a single round of combat. They're pretty good at destroying enemy terminators, with 3 of them slain on average. And will generally do okay against medium vehicles. If you had something that's, say, toughness 9 or toughness 10, like a rhino, with a 3 plus save, you get an average of 7 wounds. Definitely are struggling a bit more against that target, but even more so against things like a Land Raider, where you'd only do 4 wounds to the thing with a squad of Terminators charging. They're just not that great at taking down things that are really big, tough, and tanky. Overall, I feel like they're an interesting unit that is basically a counter infantry type unit. Should be particularly good at handling things like medium to heavy infantry and then having enormous durability when the enemy tries to strike back. But if you've got the choice of different Terminator squads in your army, then if you're fighting anything with big high toughness values, it's probably worth sending something else after them. With all that in mind though, I was kind of curious as to how Games Workshop might cost these, as I did think it might be interesting to get some community opinions as to how much the Deathwing Knight should cost to be fair in game. Currently at time of recording at least, Games Workshop hasn't released the points cost for the upcoming Dark Angels Codex, as the full book hasn't been released yet. It's still technically an annoying early access phase, even if we do know all the rules. 
With that in mind, I thought it would be interesting to get a vote of channel viewers to see what they'd rate the Deathwing Knights as being fairly costed at. Previously, there were 235 points before. They have taken a couple of nerfs since that, particularly with the maces going down from damage 3 to damage 2. And a squad size reduction, I feel like that won't help them either, reducing the amount of value that you can get from any one stratagem or character out of them. Still though, previously at 235 points, they were considered competitive. Every so often, lists would take a big unit of them, but maybe not quite as auto-include as Azrael for the Dark Angels. He was in just about every single competitive list. In this poll, 21,000 people voted, and the results are kind of interestingly mixed. Surprising just how many there are at people at both ends of the spectrum. I put the top answer as 230 points, and the bottom answer as 190 points. Both of those get a fair amount of representation, as do the points costs in between. Taking an average of those, it means that you guys voted that these guys should cost around about 208 points. So I guess if we're going by Games Workshop's increments of 5, that'd be 210. I guess we'll have to wait and see what Games Workshop deliver for exactly how strong they are in-game. My actual instincts are that 210 points would be a very, very good points cost for them, given how tanky they are. And I still think that they'd be solidly playable at around about 215 to 220-ish. With the Knight Master's weapon accounted for, they still do some okay damage. And against a lot of common weapons, they're about twice as hard to take out as standard Terminators, which I think is really quite meaningful. Obviously, the lower the cost, the better they'll be, though. And they are certainly a unit that can get quite a lot of support out of Codex Dark Angels and Codex Space Marines with other units on the board. Oath of Moment maybe isn't as meaningful for them as other things, given that they already hit on a 2+. Plus. And for course stratagems, maybe Armour of Contempt is the most useful one. If you needed extra durability, if this makes them save on a 3+, plus or a 2+, plus rather than their 4+, plus invulnerable, then that could be a big deal. For getting into the combat, Deep Strike seems like a reasonable option for them. If they make a charge at 9 inches, they'd have around a 27% chance of making combat, going up to 47% if you budgeted a command point reroll for them. With a small 5-man unit profile that you might be able to hide behind line of sight blocking terrain, it could be a pretty reasonable target for rapid ingress as well. That potentially giving them something like a 4-inch charge on something that they needed. It's if you know you can drop alongside something that the enemy isn't going to want to charge you with. Otherwise, a Land Raider could be an option, though I feel like, in general, for units that just have massive amounts of durability, they're just perhaps a little bit better foot slogging, and you might as well take another unit of these guys and advance them on foot, rather than trying to Land Raider them into combat. Foot slogging might be kind of fine, though. Could be interesting if you could still try and tow one of the Terminators into cover, which means that you could have an even better boosted save on one of them, and use that one to tank damage on first. For character choices, the Terminators are fairly spoilt for choice. They've got Belial out of the core Dark Angels Codex. He gives them a bunch of precision things with their attacks. Though I must admit I feel like the precision keyword just maybe isn't quite as general purpose or well-rounded as some of the rest. Not compared with getting free stratagems, charge rerolls, or damage boosts. Otherwise, they've got the core cast of Space Marine characters. The Terminator Chaplain, Captain, Librarian, or Ancient. The Captain does depend on the detachment that he's in. Though the free charge reroll could give them a coin flip chance of getting into combat at a 9-inch deep strike which is helpful. The chaplain could definitely round out their damage a bit against things that are big and tough. Getting a plus one to wound on those strength six swords could be really nice into things like land raiders. On average, you get around about an extra plus three wounds against toughness nine or toughness ten vehicles, giving them a fairly credible chance of killing something like a rhino or a gladiator tank in a single round of combat if they roll hot. And once you've taken into account the chaplain's damage, the Librarian gives you sustained hits and a little bit of ranged fire. I feel like overall the Chaplain might be a little bit more tempting for that role. And the Terminator Ancient could help out with their objective control, plus gives them damage boosts as the squad gets depleted. I feel like that's a bit more meaningful on big 10-man Terminator squads, and you can't take them that way anymore. I guess it could be an interesting one for running the Pennant of Remembrance, if you do happen to be playing the Unforgiven Task Force. I think out of these guys, probably my favourite ones would either be the Terminator Captain or the Terminator Chaplain. Adding a bit more raw melee damage to the unit definitely doesn't hurt, given that they kind of have durability sauced already. For the Dark Angels detachments, the one that helps them out easily the most is the Inner Circle Task Force. This one could give them a plus one to wound against units that are on their target vowed objective for the turn. That definitely could be helpful, though I suppose it might make the chaplain boost a little bit less good, as sometimes you might be able to get that boost for free. I think the nice thing about this one, though, is their support package. You can get that enhancement for first turn deep strike, which could be very intimidating to land these guys in the midfield somewhere. The stratagem for 3-inch deep strike is rather nice. You could land a squad in the backfield that way. 
Or you could potentially have minus one to wound in the shooting phase if you just wanted to double down on ridiculous durability and make the squad near impossible to gun down. Compared with that, I don't think that the Unforgiven Task Force really offers all that much that's useful for them. The stratagem for lethal hits could be okay against the right targets. The minus one to wound when they're charged for two CP could be alright, though is a bit pricey. And the Penance Remembrance, as mentioned, could be nice for the Feel No Pain. Otherwise, for the Space Marine Codex specific detachments, Gladius would be very good to get Assault Doctrine to deliver them into melee at a bigger threat range, and I feel like the 1 CP for plus 1 to wound and extra AP is really quite a big deal for their damage output. Otherwise, it's kind of a shame for them that the first company task force is fairly weak. You could do repeated teleporting with the Terminator stratagem for that, though they don't really gain too much from some of the other stratagems like the plus 1 to hit. I guess the 1 per game reroll wounds or a few of the enhancements are okay though. The Vanguard Spearhead could give them stealth and cover at long range, which makes them even more ridiculous to remove, as they could use both of those quite nicely. Reactive movement is still scary. I feel like having them as an infiltrating unit is still pretty terrifying, particularly as they are a unit that could easily afford to be on the front line with their massive toughness. Otherwise, Advance and Charge is nice in the Stormlands, though that's probably better for Ravenwing. The Firestorm Assault Force could also offer a plus one to wound if they happen to be there, but neither of those really feel like they're tailor-made for the Deathwing Knights, and they could just be nice to have options. Overall, as mentioned, how strong they will be will definitely be determined by their points cost. At time of recording, they could literally be the strongest unit in 40k if Games Workshop decided to charge them super cheap, though my hope is that they'll probably land somewhere around the 210 to 220 point sort of mark. I feel like that would make them a competitive unit for the Dark Angels. Their main competitors would be some of the other Terminator squads, which would depend on how the points stack up against those. Certainly having Power Fist to be able to handle some tougher things doesn't hurt, though I certainly wouldn't underestimate the sheer durability of these guys. Otherwise, they'd be competing against Blade Guard for more quality melee foot troops. They can access lethal hits, which is an advantage for them, and they get damage to weapons with AP too. Or if you wanted a unit to jump out of a land raider, aggressors could help with that. I think in-game, if I were using them, I'd probably be most tempted to take a squad of five of them with a chaplain, maybe go with the swords and the lethal hits relic weapon, and then use them as a rapid ingress threat to maybe drop down somewhere where they're not just going to get immediately focused by the entire enemy army, and then move on to make a charge from there. At least the chaplain would make them a fair bit more general purpose, and could punch up against some tougher stuff if they happen to be playing against knights or something. Certainly if they could target some enemy Terminators or Space Marines or something, that feels like the best use for them, and then use their big durability to soak up a whole bunch of enemy fire while the rest of your army does its thing, and hopefully they could remain on an objective while they do so. Overall, despite the disappointment at a few small nerfs on their datasheet, I still think they remain a very interesting unit. Kind of cool to have Terminators that are just extra tanky, even if it does cost them a little bit of offensive output. Let me know what you think of the squad and the rules down in the comments below, Look forward to hearing all your thoughts and ideas and how you'd be planning to run them. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.